So we started having issues with our generator. It just would not start, or actually it wouldn't stay running. We'd hold the start button down and it would start, but as soon as we released the start button, it would shut off. It was giving us a code fault 37, which is invalid set configuration, which didn't mean a lot to me, but after doing research and whatnot, I thought it was gonna be this control board needed replaced. And we were this close to spending $680 on a new one. When I got a hold of um, a common service department and the service manager spoke with me on the phone for a while and I explained what was going on and his suggestion was to look at the brush block before replacing that. It's a, he said it's a cheaper way to start. So I did, this is the brush block. And as you can see, they're two different sizes and they're not supposed to be. So I'm hoping that this is the issue. It was a $50 part, they had it in stock. Um, so I'm gonna change that out and see if it fixes it. So I've removed the air box and taking the control board out allowed me access to, this is where the brush block was. The slip rings, I believe they're called, are back there. And the bottom one, hard to see in the video, but it has some pitting on it. And so the service manager I spoke with at Cummins recommended this tool. I got it from Granger. It was a little expensive with delivery, about $50. This is the part number 426P77. But that's to clean that slip ring before I install the new brush block. So here's our new brush block. See, <laughs> quite a difference from the old one. I cleaned the rings up the best that I could. So that gets installed there. Just one 10 millimeter bolt holding that on. There's two wires, they both look very similar. So when I took them off, something I do is to remind myself, I put black electrical tape on the bottom wire. I've got the new brush block installed. I went ahead and installed new spark plugs. One's there and the other is right here. The wrench fits nicely back in there. Since I got it apart, I figured I might as well change the spark plugs. I haven't done it in the two years I've owned it and they definitely look like they needed it. Now I'm gonna start putting this back together. I had disconnected these wires doing all this. I'm gonna do it again right now, but I put them back together because I needed to push the start button and have the um, rings turn when I polished them. So I'm gonna get this taken off and get the controller put back in or the control board. Uh, so I went ahead and disconnected my positive terminal. I taped it up. Make sure you tape it up if you do it this way because it'll, if it touches metal, it's gonna um, spark and, you know, could cause you other issues. Now I'm having my stud here, the bolt, I'm sorry, the nut on this stud is not wanting to come out. The whole stud comes out, but it hasn't been an issue. I've put it back together a couple times and it's, doing what it should be so it's just old and rusty so this is the housing that the control board gets mounted into those these two bolts go through the top those two there what i like to do another thing i like to do when i'm working on things like this because it's been a couple days since i've taken this apart is these are the three bolts that hold this housing in one here one there and another right there I like to put them back where I took them out of so I don't lose them and I know exactly where they go back to. I did the same thing with the air box. This holds it in and this holds it in. And then there's two nuts to hold the air box to the carburetor. All right, got the housing back on. I decided to mount the control board inside of it with those two bolts before I put it in, which was probably a smart decision. I think probably maybe had to been done that way also. The two bolts here in the front, easy to get to this one back here it's a pain routing those wires under there make sure you get them under there good so they're not pinched 
and then just connect that harness back up. That harness is a little bit of a bear to get to actually click and lock, but you can definitely hear and feel a little bit of a click, but you wanna make sure it's tight. It's not gonna come back out. And then the last thing is to put this back on. You can see it hooks on the top there and then has one bolt down here. Probably shouldn't have said last thing. There is a wiring harness that needs hooked up right here. So when putting the airbags back on, I just wanna make sure this tube up here connects right here and that this gasket is seated well on the carburetor. That's about it. Moment of truth, $100 later, let's see if it runs. In hindsight, looking at it now, nothing really has to be taken out except there's the br brush block, which is what I had to replace. It can be accessed right here. If you're having the same issue that I was having, which essentially was I'd hold the start button, it would start up, but as soon as I let go, it would shut off. This is where I would start. It was giving me code 37, and it ended up being this $50 brush block part. If you found this video useful, you could do me a huge favor and subscribe. Uh, maybe like, comment, share, but subscribing would be, be huge. So thanks for watching.